So this is the Osborne One, one of the earliest, if not the earliest, portable computers. With massive quote marks around the word portable. Yeah, it was a different time then. It came to me with a bit of rust in various parts and dirt, and so I cleaned around the outside a bit. I'm thinking before we try powering this up, we should take a look inside. All righty, let's get working. So taking the Osborne apart is, mercifully, incredibly simple. There's five screws on the bottom, and uh, they actually came out pretty easily. As you can see, this top is pretty loose, but we've still got to get the screws out of their holes, like Pux 20 Phil or whatever his name is. And it looks like this screw is just kind of rattling around inside. That's a little disturbing. Okay, and what do we know about all of this circuitry here? For the love of Pete, don't touch it. And the power supply over here, what do we know about that? Don't lick it. Ooh, somebody must have been hungry. Somebody took a big bite out of this bit. Yum, plastic. Let's see, I would really like to get in here and clean off that board some. But it looks like it will be a pain to get to. The main thing I note is it doesn't look like there's any add-on boards. I just see the motherboard, the drives, power supply, and this little board back here as part of the back of the unit. Professional Lanterman's wild ride in three, two, one, now. Oh, hey, wait, wait, what, what was that? A little LED came on. For a split second. Yeah. Mm, the screen is not nope. coming on. We get a little flash of the disk drive LEDs, but that's about it. Yeah, and nothing in the screen is coming on, like. Wait, I think I hear that CRT squeal. All right, so y'all can't hear this because dad's iPhone is not very good at picking up like very high pitched noises. And dad can't hear it because he's 52 years old, but I can. There is a very faint tone coming from the CRT, I swear. Okay. Okay, this is future Aaron mentioning that I didn't understand the way this works. There's a video signal that's coming out of the board and you can have an adapter that then plugs into an external display. But if you want it to actually connect to this cable here that goes to the monitor, you need to have a little shunt of some sort that connects the pins on one side of the board to another, such as this reproduction right here. Okay, now we're going to go through the sequence of us not knowing that and testing the video output. Okay, something that makes me very nervous about this disk drive. There's a thing that looks like some sort of optical encoder, and it's just kind of like floating around there. It's not hooked to anything. Oh boy. Okay, so this is now exposed power supply. So before I did anything else, I spent some quality time with this, making sure things are discharged. And we measured things with the multimeter, crossed various caps to make sure things were discharged. We certainly metered its multi. Okay, so stuff from the mains connections here goes over to the power supply. And then lines come out of the power supply and go over here. And some others go this direction. So it looks like we can at least maybe start here and make sure it's getting voltages here. But to figure out what we should see, I should actually go find a manual for this thing. Okay, so our power supply is supposed to give us plus five and plus 12 volts. Ah, so the motherboard shows on the schematic that there's a seven pin connector where pins three and five are ground, pins two and six are five volts, and pins one and seven are 12 volts. Why else do we need 12 volts? So I think this has some RS-232 connections and I think those use 12 volts. Also, some older chips would sometimes need higher power supply values for this, that, or the other. Some really old chips would even need negative power supplies, but we should be able to measure some voltage here. So I'm gonna assume this is grounded. Show what it reads. 12 volts, 12, five, oh, five again. Nothing. Okay, those are the Fourteen. Grounds. Yeah, those are millivolts, so that's okay. Oh, that's millivolts, okay. Yeah. Okay, so this board here is getting 5 volts and 12 volts the way it's supposed to. I don't think it's a problem with the power supply. Okay, so 
I guess looking at the top of the motherboard, the Z80 would be here. Why didn't I think to turn on the light earlier? Anyway, now the Z80 should be here, looking from this side of the board. I wanna see if we're getting a clock. Okay, so pin six here should be the clock. Let's see if we're getting a clock. Oh, that looks like a clock. Well, okay. no, it looks like a bunch of squiggly lines. Yeah, well, those squiggly lines are representing uh, up-down signals of a nice clock. Let's measure it on the screen. Do you see how there's a little blue button? Uh, like, it's like a little blue square with some lines on it. This one? Yeah. That one. Press that one. Okay, right. click on measurements. Okay. Uh, four megahertz. Okay, that's what they're running their Z80 at. Okay, so the... Um, the processor's getting a clock. Oh, you know what? I wonder if this thing has any other video outputs we could try plugging into an external monitor. Of course it does. Okay, let's take a look. So we figured out what the external video display output's gonna be. Can you guess which one of these ports external video is gonna be? Nope, you're wrong, it's this thing. What? What is this? What is this? What, why? How? For what reason is it designed like this? Anyways, we're going to see if we can read the, some of the signals coming off of this thing for with the uh, oscilloscope over here. Check this thing out. AMB oscilloscope. I oscillate the scopes. These two fellows look like little eyeballs. Get over there. Okay, so here's a pinout. So you have ground, vertical sync, video out, plus 12 horizontal. So according to my dad, this is apparently what a video signal is supposed to look like, which means... Well, in particular, this is the vertical sync signal. So hit the little blue button and uh, the, yep, with the sure. lines d and hit measurements. D d okay, so that's... 60 hertz. Yeah, so that's 60 hertz. That's the rate of the signal that tells the CRT to go from the lower right corner of the screen to the upper left corner of the screen. And now, let's see, if I go to the next one, this should be the video output. Well, it's giving me something complicated and weird, which suggests to me it is trying to display some video. And now if I go over one more, that should be 12 volts. Uh, we'll come back to that. And then one to the right of that should be horizontal sync. Ah, there we go. Now hit your, oh, it's 15.5 kilohertz. That sounds like a horizontal sync signal. Hit the auto scale button again. Yep, there's a horizontal sync. So I think this thing is trying to give us video output. Which means we're one step closer to debugging. It isn't a problem with the processor or anything. It's a problem with this dinky little yeah, CRT. I want to check to make sure. Well, also, there's another, there's another, let's see. There's also some other things over here. There's a brightness high. Hit auto scale. Uh, Whatever that is. Okay, brightness low. And here's brightness arm. I don't know what these things are, but we can figure that out later. Well, we have it open. Why don't we get to the other side of the board and clean that off? Hey, Dad, I've got a pun for you. What sound does a white noise machine make? I don't know. What sound does a white noise machine make? <laughs> okay, the compressed air is insufficient. This has really been sitting around for a while. Yikes, look at all that stuff. Okay, that was gross. There was like 40 years of dust gunked on there. Okay, so we're gonna leave this mostly disassembled for testing once that shunt comes in because probably there's other stuff that's gonna need fixed anyway, and particularly the drives. But I'm wondering, what, what is this? If anyone knows what this is, let me know.